Two enthusiasts, two red sports cars. To the uninitiated, they look like something from the 1930s. To those in the know, they're Panthers. During the 70s and 80s, the two incarnations of the Panther Car Company based at Brooklands made these pretty two-seaters. Much loved and cherished by their owners, Panthers struggled for a while to be accepted as true classics. Now, however, they wear that particular badge with style, and their fiercely loyal owners continue to keep them looking good, many driving them summer and winter. I'm Andy Stobie, and I own a Panther Lima Series 2. Uh, I've had this car for 17 years, it's actually my third Panther, um, and I just love the cars. The Panther Car Company was actually two separate companies. Uh, the first company was started in 1972 by a guy called Bob Jankel, and the first car was the J72, which was J for Jankel and 1972. And he was the, the driving force behind the company, and he was the one who had the idea in the mid-70s to build a more popular car, which actually became the Lima. They were actually selling them in Vauxhall showrooms. So that was about 1976. And then they also made lots of one-off cars. Some people have heard of the six-wheel Panther, uh, which, that, which was 8.2 litre, where it had two sets of driving wheels, like you see on lorries or the Elf Tyrrell. Uh, they all actually made two of those. and They're uh, unfortunately now uh, out of the country. And, um, uh, it, uh, it, it developed from there in terms of different models as they tried to do different things. In uh, 1979, I understand that Panther started to have cash flow problems. They had about 25 lemurs over in Japan that they were having problems getting the import uh, classification on. They flew a guy over to Japan to sort it all out. When he was on his way back uh, with the check, uh, so the uh, legend goes, the, uh, the bank uh, pulled the plug on the company. Uh, but at the time, they were also uh, bidding to build a factory in Northern Ireland and to build a car called the Equus, which was also based on the Lima and looks more like one of these 70s wedge-shaped sports cars. So only one was ever made. And uh, unfortunately, because of the cash flow problems, uh, the government decided that Panther were no longer suitable to apply to build this factory in Northern Ireland, leaving the way open, as I understand it, for John DeLorean to um, build his company, and everyone knows about the uh, history subsequently uh, uh, with that. Then a Korean uh, chap uh, bought the company from uh, administration, and he sent a Lima uh, over to Korea, and then made them out of aluminium using cheap Korean labor. And then they, they would pack uh, shipping containers with callista bodies that were in pieces with the, the nose, the, the back and the wings uh, and so on and we shipped them over to uh, Brooklands in Surrey to be assembled into, uh, into callistas and of course like one of the problems with aluminium is that it's quite soft and so they'd have to do usually do quite a lot of work to bring them back up in terms of getting the finish again and take out any dents that were, uh, were in there. And when they brought the bodies back they couldn't get the Vauxhall engines anymore, and so they had an agreement with Ford. And so the, the, the Callistas were 1.6 or 2.8 engines initially, and as Ford moved on with their engine sizes, then so did Panther because they didn't have any choice. And then they moved up to 2.9, 2.9 injection until around about 1990 when they stopped making the cars. Panthers were always sold to the public as being wind in the hair motoring for, um, uh, for enthusiasts where it was old style, um, bodywork, but with modern running gear to give you better uh, reliability on that. So it was always a, a pastiche of what a, a 1930 sports car was. Um, there were never exact replicas of anything in particular. 
For British motorists, I think there's always the image of a classic car. What is a classic car? So Morgans have been built for years and have the heritage. Panther was starting to, trying to build this from scratch and they never had quite the same classic car cachet. You quite often get asked, is it a kit car? Uh, well, no, it's not. It's it was a hand-built car, just like Morgan's uh, uh, are. And it took Panther a long time to get over that, that image. Initially, uh, only Lemurs were accepted as classic cars, and, only, and then later on, Callistas. So it's a very ethereal thing about what defines a classic car. And, and it's, it's about perception in the eyes of the, 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 the motoring public and what they would like and what they would like to drive. When Panther started, it was something that Bob Jankel always wanted to do, and I think he believes that he could build up that uh, th that enthusiasm. Just the same as nowadays, you still get small um, car makers, you still get unusual cars, and they um, and they, they sell them, but in small quantities. And the difficulty was always to get the right volume to be able to make a profit, but not such a huge volume. You, you're never going to get to for the levels of, um, uh, of, uh, of manufacture. A lovely late summer's day and any excuse for a drive in the Lima. Unlike many cars that look like this, the Panther's relatively modern underpinnings make for a relaxing drive and civilised handling, without the bone shaker suspension that plagues other ostensibly similar looking classics. And with a light glass fibre body and tubular chassis mated to a reasonably warm Vauxhall engine, Andy's Lima has a pretty spectacular power to weight ratio too. first got interested in Panthers actually when I was a student I had the road test for the Panther Lima from the Sunday Express on my wall and I could probably quote that article off by heart and it was always my dream car and when I got a decent job it was the car I wanted and so, uh, so I bought one. When I first decided I wanted a Panther I looked around. I didn't know that much about them and I didn't get in contact with the owners club which I should have done. Uh, the first one I bought was a uh, was also a, a Lima, Panther Lima, and I thought, why did I buy this car? It's heavy on petrol, it's expensive on insurance, um, and it leaks and so on. And I only had that for about um, three months. So I th changed it for a Panther Callista, um, which I had for about six or seven years, uh, although it was only a 1.6, so it wasn't quite that uh, powerful. And then someone else in the club who had this Panther Lima was coming for early retirement, um, I always said to him, if you're ever selling it, can I be first in line? And he did, and I was, and I bought it. And uh, when I bought it, it was um, 16 years old and had only done 15,000 miles. All Panther Lemurs have um, uh, 2.3 litre Vauxhall Magnum engines and uh, Vauxhall Magnum running gear and switch gear and so on. Uh, they have a fiberglass body and um, uh, mine has, the Series 2 has a chassis compared to the Series 1 which didn't, so it's a lot stronger. Uh, on that. Um, the thing with, uh, with all Panthers is that they're all different and there isn't the obsession with it has to be a particular style or has to fit into that, um, that mode because there isn't one. And so we can do whatever we like uh, with the Panther and people say, oh, that's nice. What did you do uh, uh, with that? So in my case, I've done lots of things like uh, I've had a mohair hood fitted, I've had a leather interior done and various bits and pieces and so on to improve it. You can throw it around a bit, it's not quite as stable as modern sports cars um, and because it has the fiberglass body, no airbags, um, then I actually do get a bit nervous about it with such a powerful car. So when one of the most popular questions is what engine is it, it's 2.3 litre, how fast does it go? Well I don't know because uh, the most I take it up to is um, just over 70 on the motorway and even then I start to get nervous. I think one of the important things with Panthers is that 
they are to use. It's not um, just to, to uh, put away and just uh, admire from a distance. All panther owners tend to, uh, to, uh, to use them to some extent. Um, probably do two to 3,000 miles a year on average uh, in, uh, uh, in my car. If I've got the excuse where the, uh, the weather's nice, I'll uh, take it out. I have a 1988 Panther Callista, 2.9i. The 2.9i being the reference to the engine size, which comes out of a Ford Granada. The usual question is, how fast does it go? The answer is, as fast as I want it to go. I've had it for 10 years, largely trouble free. Uh, although early on in my ownership, I uh, decided to put an uh, electric fan on because it does have a tendency to overheat, especially after going up a steep hill. As I say, fairly trouble-free motoring, as long as it's maintained on a, a regular basis. It's uh, not a difficult car to drive, provided you remember it doesn't have power steering. And if you try and move the steering wheel when the car is stationary, it's very heavy. Once the wheels are rolling, it's so much easier. So uh, you just have to remember that basic fact. Don't turn the steering wheel unless the front wheels are moving for, by the backwards or forwards and the steering is so much easier. It's very precise to drive on the road. You can put it pretty well where you want it to go. It's not so good in the snow, I must admit, but then it doesn't go out very often in the winter, so that's not a major problem. This is my first Panther. I wanted to buy a red sports car. I'd never had a sports car before, and I decided I would like a red sports car. So I went to look at uh, one or two other motor cars, and then this uh, Panther came on the horizon. I really liked the look of it. I think it was the looks that sold it, really. And uh, I went on a little mini holiday down to the south of England where there were several for sale. Uh, tried three and I bought this one, which was owned by uh, a chap who used to work for a helicopter company. And he kept it very nicely in a beautifully clean garage. <laughs> and uh, the car was very nice. It only had 10,000 miles on it, I think, when I bought it. Unfortunately, the previous owner thought leather was sweaty and he changed the leather seats to velour. I don't mind velour, but I'm not that much of an enthusiast that I have to change it to leather. I'm reasonably happy with the velour, so I stuck with it. Most of the cars seem to have some differences, even in the same model. You, 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 colleagues who have them, even the same year, within weeks of manufacture, they're different. That's part of the attraction of the car, I suppose, that there is this little bit of uniqueness to having any Panther because they're handmade British sports cars and they have their little quirks and idiosyncrasies. And I've got quite used to mine. I like the way it fits around me. I like the way it drives. One thing perhaps would be power steering, but because they didn't come with power steering, it would have to be a retrofit that there are I think there's a mechanical and an electrical version that can be done, but uh, it's an awful lot of work for not a lot of gain if you drive it properly. <laughs> so, two similar looking cars. One with a fibreglass body and a Vauxhall power plant, that's the Lima on the left, and one with an aluminium body and a Ford power plant, that's the later Callista on the right. One other subtle difference, well, not so subtle when it starts raining, is the soft top. The Callista's just folds back, but the Lima's takes rather more work, as Andy was forced to demonstrate when it started to rain during our filming session. Thank you. 
material. Where you lose fingernails. Trim by the other day. <laughs> The Panther Car Club is the owner's organisation who have been in existence for getting on for 30 years. We have a very strong membership. We produce a, member, uh, a member's magazine every two months, uh, which is very well produced, full colour magazine. We also have a members forum for those who are internet literate um, and that's quite well supported. You can ask questions, get a quick answer. There are experts on all the different models within the, within the uh, car club. Uh, we have an expert on late Callistas, an expert on early Callistas, Lima 1, Lima 2. The J72s, the great big Jaguar engine cars, and they all offer their help quite freely and quite frequently. <laughs> I'm also the treasurer of the Panther Car Club. I have ended up at that where I think I was actually inveigled onto the committee in the late 90s because someone said, oh, can you help out on that? And I've always been an organiser. So I initially I built the website and used to coordinate uh, events. And then when the previous treasurer stepped down, then I took, uh, took that on. There are times when one thinks you would like to uh, have more time um, just wandering around the cars than the, the organising, but organising events doesn't really bother me. Panther owners can often be seen at car shows up and down the UK almost every weekend. And for owners, it's a chance to chat, gossip, and just keep up with who's doing what to which car.
if someone wants to get a Panther, then first of all, get in touch with the, the owner's club. In terms of budgets, then Panthers are somewhat undervalued. They look a more expensive car than that they are. Uh, lemurs tend to could be cur currently valued at say between three and a half thousand and eight thousand pounds, obviously depending on the condition. Callistas say from four and a half thousand to twelve thousand pounds, again depending on the, uh, the the condition. Where comparable other cars of, of similar styling, you would expect to pay twice as much. And on the continent, they're uh, that the, 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 they tend to be double that, double the price, so one or two have gone abroad in recent years. If you only had the bottom end of the, uh, the valuation in terms of three to four thousand pounds, it would be something that would need a lot of TLC and would need to be a rebuild and you would, you would need to put it back together. So it's all a question of uh, what you want. Same with any model of car, then the better the car, the more it will cost. The Panther Lima Series 1 was built with a Magnum floor pan and in some cases that can weaken so uh, the, the, those prices don't tend to hold as well. So they made about 600 Lima Series 1 and then redesigned it to put a box section chassis in which is much stronger and the, uh, the engine and everything sits on that so you could drive a, a Lima 2 without the bodywork uh, for example. Both of them were fiberglass um, uh, bodies, were developed as they went along. And then with the Callista, that was also had a box section chassis, which they'd learnt from the, um, uh, the Lima uh, Series 2, uh, but then had the aluminium body that was made in, uh, in, in Korea. People often think that if you've got an aluminium body, you have less problems with it from a rusting point of view. Not always true. It does need some um, uh, care that uh, if it gets damp in the wrong conditions, the paint can blister and lift off the aluminium as the aluminium oxidizes and then the only option then is to uh, strip it down and respray it. What I would say to anybody else who is thinking of buying a Panther is get in touch with the owners club. You will find they are largely a knowledgeable group. They're all friendly. They're all enthusiastic about the cars and they will give you sound advice for free we have a fellow member who lives in Liverpool wanted to join uh, by a Panther. He came to the cl a club weekend. He, he tried my car. He tried a Lima, which he couldn't get into, which was <laughs> a good uh, learning curve for him because he's quite a big chap. And he bought a Callista solely because he'd, he'd, he'd had the experience of driving one. He'd seen them. He'd talked to the owners and he had a good level of knowledge before he went to look at the car that he finally bought. Well, from my point of view, the ownership experience has been very pleasant. I'm an active member of the club. I t I, we have a meeting every month, uh, which is attended by as many as a dozen people. Also by as few as two, but <laughs> we keep going. We're there. We're there for each other. We're there for, for, the, for the pleasure of owning the cars. 
and keeping them on the road. Um, we, we, we attend various car shows throughout the year. Uh, we have a fantastic uh, annual event called the Grand Gathering, to which cars from all over the country and the, uh, an ever-increasing number from Europe are attending. And it's been, the club is, is a Europe-wide club now. In fact, we have a member in New Zealand who keeps us regularly uh, informed of his activities going up and down the islands. Uh, we've got America, uh, American membership. So it's uh, a very good organisation to, to be a member of. I love driving my Panther. I just love the, the image it has. One thing that you do get is the reaction from teenagers. You pull up next to a bus stop and or you're passing uh, school children and they go, like your car, mister. Whoa. And I get a buzz out of that in terms of it because it looks a magnificent car. It looks really good. It sounds brilliant. And it's just the, uh, the enjoyment of open air motoring. Driving the car on a sunny day, can't beat it. So, the Lima and the Callista, two sides of the same classic coin. Choose what you want to pay for a Panther, but be prepared to put in some work if you bought something at the low end of the scale. But overall, the engines and drivetrain are pretty bulletproof, and you'll be pleased to know they're also pretty easily fixable if the worst comes to the worst. Low running costs, cheap classic insurance, and easily available parts all make owning a Panther as a second fun car an attractive proposition. So why not consider a different kind of big cat?